So we're all curious people here. And I'm sure one way that we all love to scratch that itch of curiosity that we have is through exploring food and cooking. And I myself am, you know, certainly one of those people. And, but one thing that I particularly love and cannot stand to not talk about and tell people is oatmeal. And I've tried just about every single combination of things that we can throw into oatmeal. But by far, one of the craziest things I ever tried was oatmeal with sriracha, ham, cheese, and teriyaki sauce. And let me tell you that this was probably one of the worst things I've ever put in my mouth, second to durian. <laughs> now, this clash of bland oatmeal and spicy sriracha is not just a reflection of my experimental cooking, but it's a reflection of the pursuit of knowledge. You see, in today's rapid and fast-paced society, distinct fields of studies and disciplines can no longer coexist independent of one another. And it is this convergence of knowledge that I believe is not just responsible, but is necessary to transcend boundaries and to discover new ideas and thoughts. And so this 21st century renaissance that we're living in today is starkly different from the, the, the renaissance centuries ago. And so we, as Renaissance men and women, must come to redefine what we know as Renaissance. So like I said, we can all recount the Renaissance, you know, as uh, that cultural boom that took place between the 14th and 17th centuries back in Europe many, many moons ago. But we can loosely define Renaissance as any rebirth or change or revival or renewal of interest of, or ideas. A Renaissance man, on the other hand, is one who has many of these ideas or talents, especially in the arts and humanities. But one pervading myth of the Renaissance man, per se, is that he must know everything, and he must be able to adhere and be proficient in as many things that, can, that can, he can collect into his noggin. You know, I, I, I believe otherwise. I argue that this is simply impossible. We cannot know everything. Just as the universe is expanding, so does technology, so does culture, society, politics, religion. The vast amount of knowledge out there is boundless, and quite frankly, we will never know all of it. So like I said, I, I believe this convergence of knowledge is necessary to redefine Renaissance. So let me illustrate to you two fields that I believe have been inherently related throughout time itself. The first being architecture. Now we can define architecture as a balance of structural science and aesthetic expression. But why is architecture so significant? Well, it is literally everywhere. Every single building, every single structure, pathway, park, space, and everything in between can be considered architecture. And whether we realize it or not, these spaces will inherently affect every movement, emotion evoked, and the experience of our lives. Now, kinesiology, on the other hand, is largely the science of human movement as it pertains to, you know, the promotion of health and the reduction of disease. And it pulls from fields of study such as physiology, neuroscience, uh, biomechanics, biochemistry, nutrition, metabolism. And we find kinesiologists in we find kinesiologists in athletic training settings or physical therapy settings all seeking more holistic, more cost-effective alternatives to treating chronic illnesses or injuries. Now the marrying of these two distinct fields have predates to over 2,000 years ago when ancient Roman architect Vitruvius first proposed that the human body to contain within it the, ideal, uh, the essence of ideal proportion and form. Now, this was not personified until the 15th century when da Vinci, you know, c uh, conceived the Vitruvian man. Yet, ancient scholars and scholars of antiquity still believed the human body to be based on that of the gods, and because of that, we can observe and draw universal and divine relationships from the body. And thus, architecture ingrained its roots in the inherent symmetry and harmony and beauty of the human body. 
So we can no longer think of kinesiology and architecture as two distinct fields separate from one another, but rather within an inherent symbiotic relationship. Architects must be able to understand the biomechanical limits of the human body in order to design or properly design, you know, furniture and spaces that are easily negotiable. Likewise, clinicians must be able to keep the mindset that the building in the room must be used as an extension of the human body in order to facilitate the rehabilitative process, much like the propulsion of a wheelchair or the swinging of a bat. Now, like I said, I think that today's Renaissance is radically different from the classical Renaissance centuries ago. And in order to redefine what we know as Renaissance, I will convey to you three ideas that I've come to learn and understand. The first is to observe our surroundings and be perturbed by them, deconstruct them and refabricate them. And to explain this through example, architects can particularly design spaces and based on the way that they orient these spaces or, or engineer these spaces, they can radically change the way we as users interact with these spaces. Architects can design spaces that are high up like a perch that evoke you know, a sense of all-knowing or overlooking life and privilege. Or architecture, ar excuse me, architects can design spaces that are enclosed or evoke sense, a sense of you know, protection or security or intimacy. Architects can create spaces that do not simply move the user from A to B, but rather engage them in excitement and wonder as they are gravitated towards the end goal. And architects can also design spaces that are very, you know, piazza-like or plaza-like that are all about life and adventure. And so we must understand that every single object, idea, and commodity that has ever been conceived has some sort of design aspect to this. And every single characteristic and asset of these things have been meticulously considered and evaluated and examined in order to produce some thorough and complete end product that has a specific function or appreciation. Now secondly, I believe that every single object um, an idea has some inherent beauty to it, and we must unearth that beauty. But more importantly, we must be able to derive the relationships that those objects have with other things. Now, consider the simple child's puzzle, the tangram. Seven basic shapes, but depending on the way we can orient these shapes about one another, we will, you know, derive hundreds, if not thousands, of different figures and shapes. Now, we can draw different relationships or we can perceive ideas in completely different ways based on the way we orient ourselves around these objects and ideas and also based on the way that we have come to learn and understand what these objects and ideas are from how we were brought up as professionals or what we learned through our education. For example, I make think of something completely different than you or you in the back, the person sitting right next to you. So think of, for example, a piano. Now an engineer may see a piano as this delicate construction of ivory keys and metal strings and pedals that have been engineered to produce wavelengths that we recognize as sound. Yet the aspiring mu mu musician sees a piano as the leading instrument, the elegant instrument that takes, takes a hold and leads beautiful concertos and musical scores. So we must understand and always look for this inherent beauty that can be found within in any object or idea. The thing is, it may just take specific ways we orient ourselves around them and specific and unique ways to perceive these objects and ideas in order to find that beauty. Now lastly, I believe that every single problem and puzzle in this world should no longer be thought as tame or having one simple definable solution. But rather, these problems nowadays should be thought of as wicked or having an infinite number of solutions that always and constantly generate waves of repercussion. Now consider what happens every time you eat a simple Jolly Rancher. All your fat and muscle cells will 
in response to this soul sugar molecule in your blood will cause the transcription and translation of this protein or the release of this hormone or the interaction of this molecule with that molecule. And this is all beautifully orchestrated with every, within every single fat and muscle cell within our body. But the thing is, don't even let me begin to discuss what these cells can do when they're presented with stimuli beyond just a simple Jolly Rancher. So considering that every single solution that we may assign to a certain problem will always generate these waves of repercussion, clinicians, for example, can keep in mind the, and under, better understand the physiological side effects that may result from the administration of a certain drug or treatment. Engineers can design machines and structures in ways that can respond to the user and change based on the way they interact with it or respond to changes in the environment like wind or sunlight. And so like I said, in today's society, these disciplines and these distinct fields of study can no longer coexist in isolation with one another. So we must take these three ideas that I just conveyed to you all and apply them to whatever endeavor we undertake. And only then will we be able to redefine what we know as the Renaissance. So I argue that today's Renaissance is not simply a revival or renewal of some interest or idea, but rather today's Renaissance, in today's Renaissance, we must embrace eclecticism, but more importantly, we must not be afraid to converge such multiple and diverse fields of study in order for the pursuit of knowledge or to transcend boundaries or discover new ideas and things. Now, like my oatmeal and sriracha tale, we may inevitably have ideas that may seem completely outlandish and crazy, but don't be discouraged, because while some ideas may fail, Others have enormous potential. Consider synthetic biology. We can redefine what sustainable housing is through advancements in synthetic biology that may one day reprogram a seed, a simple seedling's DNA, to one day grow into an entire building. Or take food. We are constantly and always redefining what it means to have a delectable meal by fusing so many distinct types of food, for example, Korean and Mexican. But I guarantee you, never mix oatmeal and sriracha. We'll leave it at that. So, anyways though, we as Renaissance men and women should abandon this notion that we have to know everything, but rather if we can explore everything and attempt to converge this, this fusion of knowledge in distinct fields, only then will we be able to redefine Renaissance, and only then will we be able to transcend boundaries. Thank you.